Hey folks, welcome back to another vlog. Appreciate you guys watching as always. My name is Ryan Wilson and I started this company about 21 years ago, actually on July 4th, 1999. So I went to public school system, so my math may be a little bit off, but um, I've got a really cool truck I want to show you about today and talk about. It is a 2002 H1 Hummer wagon and we completely redesigned the entire truck from front to back, everything underneath pretty much a full restoration on this truck into a vehicle that you could be proud of driving in 2020. Specifically, the interior has been updated with full six passenger seating. The engine has a high performance state-of-the-art Duramax diesel engine with the Allison six-speed transmission. What that does for you is allows you to, to obviously carry a much higher payload, but also higher speeds better fuel economy, a lot more power, and it's also a lot quieter, better for the environment, on and on. It's clearly the way to go these days with the Duramax diesel engine with the Allison transmission. Uh, just an amazing setup on the truck. But we had a lot of hurdles with this truck, and we've been building this truck over this last year. Spent a lot of time on it as far as man hours to go into it. I, I wouldn't even speculate how many hours we have, probably 10, thousand hours or so I don't know but it's a tremendous amount that went into this truck my hats off to our entire crew from the fab department shipping receiving purchasing accounting to uh, Sanderson working with our customer on this truck to uh, the techs and all the dedicated hours of overtime weekends that we put into this truck it's absolutely incredible so I definitely want to show you this truck and we'll get into the details in just a moment is actually a culmination of quite a few years of work that went into prior trucks so we did a, a truck that was a prototype a few years back I think shoot, maybe six seven years ago that was a prototype to the ATRV6 uh, stands for all-terrain reconnaissance vehicle and six stands for six passenger seating which we'll get into that in a few minutes but it does have six full passenger seats for grown adults inside the truck which has never been done before we did that with this whole exoskeleton on the outside and it was done on a Humvee. And then that created a uh, series for us, the ATRV6 program, and we've done quite a few builds with the ATRV6 with full exoskeleton on it. And predominantly it's based on the Humvee platform, but we've also done it on the H1 platform, the H1 Hummer platform. Uh, H1 Hummer platform it has a lot more uh, creature comforts that are inside that truck. It has air conditioning. Uh, full seats, full uh, interior package. It's just the way to go for something that's refined. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more uh, rugged and doesn't have all the creature comforts, ATRV6 is an amazing way to go based on the Humvee platform. into stretch seating in this truck so we actually moved the rear seats back about six seven inches and then obviously getting into the six passenger seats that have the additional two seats in the back of the truck all right so we're inside the truck now and as you can see how much room we have in this truck and if you've been in an h1 hummer you do not have a lot of seating space so i'm sitting in here with the front seat actually in the driving position for a six foot two person and look at all the leg room I have. I've just got so much leg room. The reason for that is we stretched this seating back. We actually cut out the back of the truck here in the fender well area and pushed that back about seven, eight inches. And it gives you seven to eight additional inches of leg room here. Um, but it also does something else for you too. It allows you to easily pass through the entire center of the truck. 
So you can open up the door, walk right through without any issues at all. Then moving over here, you can see one of the main focal points of the truck is this on the interior of the truck, is the six passenger seating. These seats are kind of a lot like uh, the McLaren F1 when that came out, that was a three seat design with the driver sitting in the center ahead of its time. Very cool with having the driver in the center seat with two additional passengers in the back uh, and kind of offset them. This is kind of a takeoff from that design. We did just the opposite. So we have two additional seats here that are sub mounted down about four inches and then back as well. And so what that does for you is when you sit in the rear seats, again, you have all this leg room here. Um, great, very comfortable seating over here. And you have um, a, a situation where now you can have six full-size adult uh, men in this truck without any issues. And it just makes the truck a lot more drivable. Um, you can just utilize it to its full capability and you're really not giving up a lot. And as I talk about the back of the truck, you have uh, the cargo area that we encroached on just slightly, but we also made up for a lot of that with the search and rescue fender well rack. So you've got your, you're retaining your cargo space out of this truck. what the hardest part about this truck build was, I would have to say it was the exoskeleton and fitting that exoskeleton in place. We had probably eight or nine people on fitting that exoskeleton in place. Somebody operating the forklift, people on each corner watching the, the exoskeleton come down. It was definitely nerve wracking and it was going over a fresh paint job too, the Kevlar textured paint job that we just finished up on it. If we had nicked it or damaged it in any way, that whole exoskeleton would have to come off. We'd have to repaint the entire truck, put it back on. So that was definitely nerve wracking to say the least. Uh, definitely a big day for us when we got that on there, huge milestone. And there's so many other areas that were really difficult on this truck. The stretch seating, that was a first for us. The leg work and the design work a while ago, but to finally implement that took a lot of time because you're having to go back and forth and uh, change degree angles for different pieces of uh, material panels that are going in place. Once you get that finally dialed, the next one's so much easier. The six passenger seating, it is a huge amount of work, but we've done that before. The other area that was really difficult was the uh, fuel tank. The fuel tank that we replaced a factory one with was a fully custom aluminum fuel cell. It was um, difficult to do because we we're trying to gain back a bunch of lost fuel. We could have easily just made a very small tank a rectangular tank and it would have worked fine but we would have lost a lot of fuel so the floorboards dropped down into the fuel tank so we had to create a whole new fuel tank that was designed around that and actually kind of saddled over the drive shaft so uh, that was difficult to do and we had quite a few days working on that system just to get the fuel back we did lose a little bit of fuel but we also gained a tremendous amount of drivability out of the truck going from roughly 11, 12 miles per gallon to 18, 19 miles per gallon. Um, so that made up for uh, the, I think it was a gallon and a half or so that we lost. of this build, the customer wanted to have a full exoskeleton cage on his truck, as well as a roof rack. He wanted the search and rescue roof rack, as well as full lighting on it. That was a little bit difficult at first because we were looking at it from two, from the perspective of two separate items. And then we realized, we're like, oh, why don't we just integrate the two of them together and kill two birds with one stone? And that's what we did. We came up with this exoskeleton cage and then put the roof rack bars onto that 
tied that into it. So now you have the exoskeleton as well as a fully functional roof rack. And then to finally, to finalize that whole roof rack, we actually plated the entire top with aluminum panels. So up on the top of the rack are flat aluminum panels that you can walk around on, um, fully utilize the truck, the exoskeleton, as a, um, not only as a roll cage, but also as a roof rack. And then from there we finish it off with full LED lights from Rigid Industries all the way around, so you have the whole halo lighting around the truck. One other kind of little cool design feature we did was we offset the lights. We ran the single row Rigid LED lights and they're very thin, narrow design, and we staggered them so they're kind of offset like this. Gave it kind of a unique design and I actually did that on the side of the truck because the top of the, the roof radius is up, so we kind of kept that same design by having that step design coming back. Then on the front, we did just the opposite and stepped it forward, so you have a little bit of a sunshade having that forward light hanging over just a little bit. Um, owning an H1 Hummer, you'll know that a lot of times you get this glare in from the top and it hits your eyes and it's the sun visor in it is not very effective. So having that kind of little duckbill, um, uh, if you call it that, out in the front gives you a little bit of shade from that sun coming in. I'm over on the passenger side of the exoskeleton and this truck has a total of 10 contact points. Five on each side, four on the side here. And then around the corner, there's another one on both sides. So you've got a total of 10 contact points. All of them have quick disconnects. And that's for serviceability. And what I mean by quick disconnects is you have this roll cage attachment point down here that you can pop out a couple bolts on all the way around and then lift this roll cage off the truck. So the advantage with that is you can get in there and service the truck. If you need to pull a door panel off or take this hinge off, um, you probably can get it off without taking off the exoskeleton. But if you needed to fix something, you could take it off. So you have options. You're not really stuck with a cage that's welded on there that you have to cut off. We didn't want to go too wide and make the truck just overly cumbersome on the trail, but we also wanted to make it just wide enough where we can protect these mirrors and the door panels. So you can actually utilize this whole rocker panel protection here with this angular steel construction and pivot off of rocks and actually move the truck on rocks, just wrap it around the rock and then continue on. So very uh, useful design down here. And then we finish off the rocker panel protection with a step plate that has a Predator logo engraved into it, which aids in texture getting in and out of the truck. So moving down the side of the truck, as you can see, we have the, the full rigid light package all the way around. A lot of lights up here, a lot of light that's being thrown out to the side of the truck. But we also finish it off in this kind of radius. You see that step design where the top is actually offset back a little bit. The reason for that is the whole roof of the truck has the same design. It has the same radius that goes back there. So we wanted to follow those lines, kind of accentuate it without taking away from the overall design of the truck and just have this massive light out there. I talked about this earlier, is this rear bar ties into this whole pod on the side of the truck here. This gives you a lot of protection when you're rock crawling. And if you go over a rock, you loosen up a rock or something. I've had a rock actually come up in here and get caught up in here and doing some damage to the rear quarter panel. So having this protection here gives you um, a lot of safety from your panels, but also allows us to tie in this whole wall cage. That is uh, uh, instrumental in protecting the quarter panel, the rest of the body underneath here, but also when we're removing this cage, so when we loosen up everything, all the mounts on this cage, and we shift it to take it off, you have to shift it forward about a half an inch. If we had it on the back side here, it would get really tight with the back body panel. So there's a lot of new design firsts on this truck that have never been done. One of them was on the brush guard. Really cool, kind of fun design that we did on it was we integrated the rigid single row light bar into the front of the brush guard bar. So the factory D-ring brush guard that we manufacture has a crossbar that goes across the front. And so we removed that and integrated this LED light bar in place. So when you look at it from say 20 feet away, it just looks like a D-ring brush guard. But as you get closer, you realize that the light is actually integrated into the structural design of the brush guard. On the front and rear bumpers, we integrated uh, diamond plate design into all the stepping areas on the truck, on the bumpers. 
And we also did a whole new rear ladder system that has that same textured diamond plate finish to it, box steel design. Uh, quite a shoot, I think we had um, a good two weeks building just the rear ladder. So a lot of man hours went into it, but it's, it's absolutely amazing. So for the paint, we did a full custom Kevlar paint finish. It's actually a textured material, very heavy duty. Uh, the advantages with it is that it has a Kevlar base to it. It's extremely strong, extremely robust. You can run this thing through the brush, um, really tear it up, pop it out of the brush, and you literally wipe it down and it looks brand new again. So it doesn't show scratches like a normal paint job. The Range Rover blue finish from 2020, and it turned out amazing. It has a lot of pop to it, has a lot of metallic. And that's one thing with the Kevlar finish is because it has so much texture, a lot of times you don't see the, the, the uh, metallic finish popping on it. It just gives it a lot of depth. But once you get up close to it and you really look at the paint, it has a lot of depth to it from that metallic. And you can see the metallic inside the paint. So pretty cool finish overall with the blue. So for the wheels, we went with the Predator 20 inch wheels and these are simulated bead locks. The advantage with it is they're DOT legal. They look like real bead locks. However, real bead locks are not DOT legal. I think there's one or two manufacturers out there that do it, but it's, it's cumbersome because you have to continuously tighten all these bolts. They have to be torqued down every 30 days. It's a nightmare. And if you have had these bolt heads pop off on you on the real bead locks, it's not fun. So on ours, they're simulated bead locks. They have the stainless steel quick disconnects. So they're also dual isolating. So I can pop this guy off and disconnect this whole wheel from the whole central tire inflation system. The other system, all three wheels are still connected. This one's fully isolated just by popping it off, which the factory one never did. And then you just simply pop it back on and you're good to go. And then we're running the Toyo Open Country tires. These are 40 by 15 fives. Typically the 15 fives are a little bit wide in my opinion, but on this truck they're perfect. And the reason for that is this truck is a little bit wider than most. It's an extra couple inches on each side because of the exoskeleton. So these are actually absolutely a perfect match on this truck. Um, and in my opinion, one of my favorite tires out there. They just run really smooth down the road, really quiet. On the tire carrier, we actually integrated it into the rear ladder system. And the rear ladder system is integrated into the exoskeleton. So everything is very well thought out. But a hurdle that we came into was the, the design of that rear tire carrier. Josh wanted to go one way, I wanted to go the other way. Now Josh is our fabricator who was doing a lot of the work on this truck and he wanted to do kind of an exoskeleton tire carrier design that wrapped around the tire and then it mounts up to the truck. So it kind of um, encompasses the outside of the tire. All right, so we're on the back of the truck and I would say this is probably one of my favorite sections of the truck on the outside. Reason for that is just the amount of energy, time, thought process that went into this whole area here is just above and beyond. So starting with the, the bumper, this is a full uh, Viper rear winch bumper. It has a 16,500 pound winch integrated into it. This is a Warren winch with full synthetic line, uh, the Warren Ford shackles. And then if you look at the top sections here, they're all plated with diamond plates. So the diamond plate gives you a lot of texture. Then we integrated side steps on both sides. And then on the inside here, there are reverse lights as well as brake lights. And then also on the step, we went as far as engraving our name into it. So if you look at the step down here, it says Predator across here. So check out the ladder system. The ladder system is probably one of my favorite back here. So what we did was we put the diamond plate pattern on the top section. So it gives you a lot of texture, as mentioned before, but it's fully box steel construction, all hand built, we're talking like two weeks building these, these ladder rungs going up here. Um, we also tied it into both of the roll bars coming down here. And if you look at the, from the top viewpoint going down, this is perfectly lined up all the way down and at the same angle as the bumper down here. So really ties in that overall fit and finish and attention to detail. We're utilizing two heavy duty suspension heim joints over here. Take a look at those guys, they're just massive. They're designed for off-road racing on suspension components. 
not for a tire carrier. So we're utilizing stuff that's just overly engineered. You'll never have a problem with that. So we're in the rear cargo area of the truck. And as you can see, we were able to retain just about all of the factory cargo space and actually added to it. So we lost about seven inch, I think it was about seven inches or so with the rear two seats. We submounted those seats and brought them back and we encroached by about seven inches, I believe. But we also added search and rescue fender wheel racks on both sides. So it gives you a lot more storage capacity than the factory does, even with the stretch seating that comes back on each side and the rear seats here coming back into the bed of the truck. So one of the most notable things on the inside of this 2002 is the dash. So this dash has been fully redesigned. We actually utilize our uh, Alpha dash kit which is all fiberglass panels here, down here. Everything's replaced in fiberglass. So in 2006, the Alpha Hummer came out. That was the last model year H1 Hummer that was released. And it had the same or very similar dash. The problem with it was it was made out of plastic. And over the years, it would start to crack and break and kind of fall apart. So we redesigned it out of fiberglass and it's much heavier duty, obviously, a lot stronger, and it's gonna withstand high temperatures that the inside of the truck will get. Um, but we also offer it as a conversion for older trucks. So this 2002 does not look like a 2002 anymore. It literally looks like a 2006 H1 Alpha. So very clean design. We did full black leather with blue stitching, added a little bit of contrast and brought in that exterior color to the inside of the truck. We're running full Alpine uh, stereo system here. This head unit is hands down my favorite head unit out there because you can tie in additional 12 volt references or 12 volt uh, circuits to it, meaning that you don't have to have a full dash panel with all these light switches to control 20, 30 lights that we have on this truck. We actually have them all tied into the Alpine unit. So you just switch over to the 12 volt lighting and then you switch over to whatever lights you wanna turn on and off from this Alpine head unit. So great way to go if you're running aftermarket lighting. And then of course we have um, full custom gauges over here and everything is wrapped in leather. The dog or the dash here is wrapped in leather. The kick panel is wrapped in leather where the factory alpha was um, a lot of plastic pieces in there as well. So very nice fit and finish. We have a lot of other really unique components. One of them being this rear view mirror. As you probably are well aware, the rear view mirror is not very effective in this truck because of that tire in the back. So with the flip of a switch right here, you can switch from a regular rear view mirror to a reverse camera mirror, which is very effective driving down the road. Uh, a little bit more accurate too, because the camera is back there. You're not looking through the inside of the cab, seeing all these people and seats and so forth. You just see the information you wanna see, which is that rear view in the back of the truck. folks thanks so much for watching the exoskeleton was definitely one of my favorite builds there's a lot that went into this truck and got us thinking outside the box so hope you enjoyed it make sure you hit the subscribe button down below we'll see you guys soon